Okay, here we are. What is it? After party 16 now? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, we're heading down the pike on after parties for sure. It's uh, They're going by pretty quick. Last after party was uh, on game all night, and that was a fun time. And uh, this one we're going to talk about 48, 49, and 50, titled 48 was Weathering the Storm, 49, Reflecting Pools, and 50, I'll Be Back for You. <laughs> I'll be back for you. Easy, can. Okay. So I got, I got some, uh, some notes down here. So 48 starts, uh, we, we were in the crabs. Um, we had crabs. We got some crabs, and we're heading down into the sea, um, trying to find, trying to learn how to use these things without really helping each other too much, uh, which is our <laughs> way. Heaven forbid we help each other. Yep. And uh, I think we sort of crawled around the bottom and then finally found a, what was it, like a, a big skull made of coral. Looked like a big skull. Yeah, which we decided to uh, pop down into the eyes and, and take As a look. As one would do. Naturally. And, uh, yeah, so Gozer and Bryn were leading the way in their crab, sc- scurrying around in a little ten-foot coral urn. Yeah. And what do you guys think about what happened down there? We saw we ran into the uh, floating pirate, or not really pirates, floating... Uh, Sailors. Sailors that had this, these creatures that sucked into their face, actually yeah. bit into their faces. You could say you could say they were floating semen. Um. Yeah, yeah, you could. <laughs> I have a lot of theories about the semen. Um, no, not really oh. about the semen. About the the two in cloaks. Yeah, she's Elena's got a handle on the semen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Where have I started? Semen. Um, the two that were in like the the black were they black Leland you said like cloaks yeah black they were like in like robes. you know standard like stereotypical cultist cultists, cultisty black robes yeah cultisty black robes and we later discovered in the coral urn that they were called what again one of them was right well one of them was I guess I, a scion a uh, deep scion yeah that's right deep scion bum 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 bum. Enter yeah, the in one my that conspiracy theories. Sort of turned yes. into what it was it a, a it was a human like crustacean type creature. Yeah, it was a humanoid morphed um, into basically like kind of long like uh, tendrils is for hair and kind of nice like large fins kind of coming out of their forearms and this like bisected mouth that almost like split in two kind of opens up. But they were like disguised, right? So they were like humanoid. Yeah, it, it was disguised. Yeah, so it only reverted after you had slain it. Sorry, they. So what it, was its same mouth thing. like? The demigorgon? Yeah. Um, kind of, but only really in like two pieces instead of like this kind of four pointed flap. It it that is a good comparison. Yeah. Well, we did chop one in half. <laughs> yeah. And it didn't it didn't turn right. That one stayed into a humanoid form. Is that I correct? That's or right. We just didn't tell. No, no. Okay. That's right. Only one of them changed. Yeah. And uh, they were dragging uh, around some of the, the poor semen. And uh, one, w- when we did a little closer investigation, did recognize that they were from the uh, Rising Starfish. One of the dock workers. And a little later, we, f- we found old Grimby Chum there. Yeah. So they didn't have a very good trip. I had semen. Grimby Chum. Aww, That's right. Senior Chum. My theories begin with the knowledge that Falzerin privately acquires from his investigation. So Bryn wouldn't know this, but it just makes me wonder, is Falzerin really human? Dun-dun-dun! What What do you mean, what knowledge that... um... Uh, Leland gave you some knowledge about the fact that they're from, like, they usually begin from a watery grave or something, right? Am I remembering? Yep, yep. Oh, I think I know what what kind of uh, comment you're talking about. And Falzerin was in a shipwreck, and so Elena yeah. Falls, is thinking, he's not hmm. human. Yeah, like he died in a greater power, like yeah. brought him back. That makes total sense. Yeah. yeah, and I mean the rope, so maybe he's even related to cultists. This is all just a big <laughs> ambush. Yeah. 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 
He's a good swimmer, really good swimmer. We, so we Gozer saw that. was and right in punching Falsey all those times. Exactly. Falzer is whoa, whoa, Samuel whoa. Foltis with gills. <laughs> yeah, well, he right? keeps mentioning, like, I don't need help swimming, and I can hold my breath and all this stuff. I mean, it's making a little sense, right? Like... Bryn can't be sus- suspicious, though, because she doesn't know anything about these scions. So. Right, right, right. And you don't know that f- the information Falzerin has about them, what source it came from, this, this friend that Falzerin has. Right, true. Is it Danzig? It's a fellow a deep scion. Oh, according to Elena's theory, yeah, it must be. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I agree with Elena. There's Everyone needs to just quit, quit staring at my gills. It's making me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just got thinking, you know? Maybe someone else out there was thinking. Well, Em, that's a good point. I don't think any of the characters know, but you guys overheard that when I opened my spell book, I have a new spell now from Izzy called Disguise Self. Yep. Yeah. So if I just got that spell... Yeah, but someone else, the higher power, could be disguising you themselves, in my opinion. So, I mean, you can surmise that there's we, a storm we that's half deep scion. De- <laughs> destroying these ships, and they're they're capturing the seam and keeping them alive in some way, at least. For some reason. To, yeah. to transform them into one of the things that was carrying the others, right? Sort of a mm. worker bee. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I think we could elf put those scion, together. You know? Yeah. So you wouldn't have all the telltale signs, just what's under the robe. Okay. We've never seen Falls or a Naked, so we don't know. That's true. Have I? No, I'm just Speak for yourself. <laughs> oh, Shaft. I told you. Shaft I told you that Shaft, Shaft and uh, Falls are become I mean, a lot closer friends. Good, good buddies. Chris let this statement slip for what it's worth. He said something in his interview about the fact that Shaft and Leland are maybe the two people that know everything that's going on. So that makes me wonder, does Shaft know everything? Is Shaft in on this? How much does Shaft know about Falls or in? Because we don't listen to any of those private conversations. So, I don't know. Right, 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 right. Well, a good I'll, comment. I'll, I'll certainly tell you that the only person that knows what the fuck is going on is me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you, Leland? Do well, you know yeah. Okay. <laughs> but like, Leland's I'm working. You have all the information. I, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> I'm working on a basis of you know that 50 percent knowing what's going on, but like that's the base level, right? And you guys are far below that base level <laughs> as players. <Yeah. laughs> oh, for sure. Like I said, Bryn doesn't know any of this, so take it for what it's worth. It's all right. the The cork board in our uh, office with all the red strings and pins in it and pictures of things, it's not taking up too much space, so we can leave it up. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't lost sleep at all. Well, I think some of the cool things that happened, the, the battle with the crabs, the learning how to go and chop the guys in half, and, you know, the crabs had 200 hit points. I mean, that was awesome. Yeah. That's why later in 49, Shaft didn't really want to get out of the crab just yet until he saw what was going on around him. Because uh, that's a pretty, that's like a tank, man. Yeah. That was, mm-hmm. uh, that's pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah, those crabs are a pretty sweet thing to have. So what, uh, what came, what came next? Well, that pretty much wrapped up 48. That was uh, the battle. Well, then we went down and, and we found the, the little open cavern. And inside that, we the pools. I think that we pr- the little AirPods. nursery. The pools. Yeah. Yep. I keep saying and AirPods. Little sucker things. Is that trademarked? Breathing pods. Okay. <laughs> Aren't AirPods some kind of shoe? <laughs> no, they're the Apple headphone things. Oh, little... those things. Yeah. Q-tips. <laughs> It'll be a, a little less intrusive than the ones Leland came up with. It bites onto your mouth and sticks something down your throat. But they don't they don't cost you three hundred dollars. Well that's true. Yeah, they're probably they're pretty point. cheap. There's a whole pool of them you can pick from. I mean how you, you meet you meet the right deep sign and he'll put it he'll give it to you for free. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so we head down the we go down into Erica's room where we which where we sneaky sneaky really well. We use uh, you know, everything we can to be really quiet, but she just looks in the mirror and sees her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ghoster that starts awesome. yelling yeah. pretty quickly, too. What's your stealth? 37. But she's looking at you. <laughs> 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 oh, 
So yeah, the that was the opposite day mirror, really. Um, everything that we saw inside the mirror, I guess. I guess if you looked in the mirror, it didn't really change. You still had to make your wisdom saving throw, which I think all of us passed as much as uh, Leland didn't uh, like it, except for Gozer, yeah, who stayed stunned for just a little while. Yeah, that was annoying. Yeah, that mirror sucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was like dead. a it should have made better. It was a revenant mirror. What was the DC on <laughs> that? Brendel. Oh, it was pretty low. I think I said like a DC twelve. It was pretty low. Oh. But this party is seriously lacking in wisdom though, so <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a, is that a comment on our stats or our uh... Well, you can no, take it as no, you will, my sense. friend. So uh yeah, and inside that room we also saw a portal with a wooden Door frame, I guess, etched with uh, six pointed stars, a star, I guess, with glowing purple light coming out of it. Sort of. Now that wasn't one we've seen before with glowing purple. No, you've never, stars, you've so. never seen those um, uh, glowing symbols etched into a portal like that before. But it did look. Uh, I think I can assume it did look similar to one one we've seen in the it past. It looked though. identical, uh, other than those those uh, po- six pointed stars. Yes. Right. Okay. So any theories on the six-pointed stars or well, what, what they could mean? Not really, except that I. Th- it sounds like that matches that big uh, like key mechanism that was um, in, on that little dam in the tunnel where the black ooze was flowing through the stream. Yeah. That was a six-pointed star, wasn't was it not? Yeah, that's the only other one we've yeah. ever seen. So. I have no idea what that means, but it, it might be connected. But that's yeah, that sort of links up Erica with the black ooze, right? Yeah. I think they are connected. Maybe. I think it's safe to say. Yeah. I don't think we've seen anything else that would connect anything up other than the star. It's too I bad someone think. doesn't have a wand of secrets that they could have used to examine that. Yeah, that it's really a shame that yeah. nobody has a wand of secrets right. that they could have yeah. used. <laughs> Maybe we'll look in. You were going to try to use it on the mirror. I know. Just what did you think it was? It did. <laughs> I thought it like cast fireball or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what I was thinking. But like he says, no, it detects secret doors and traps and all this stuff. And then, which could be very handy and useful if used. Yes. And you were yeah. feet away from this portal door. Yeah. Yeah. No. That. Yeah. And. And there I had, was a trap. I was thinking about using it on that. I asked about using it on the mirror, right? You did. Yes. Yeah. And then a bit later, I was like, "Oh, you know what? I, it would make a lot more sense to use it on the portal, but there wasn't really an opportunity." Um, as we'll come to talk well, about. Well, people started hucking well, fireball yeah. beads. Well, really, the next thing that happened was our good friend Seaweed Gozer. Mm. If you uh, recall, so we had a yeah. A seaweed Gozer version. sucked too. I don't think think Seaweed <laughs> Gozer got an attack. I mean, I think that we still are screwed anyway. So you're it's not you're so fine. much that the Seaweed Gozer sucked; it's the rest of us are that awesome. Yeah, yes. maybe. I mean, it takes a collapsing <laughs> coral urn to kill any of you mother puggers. Okay, Leland, <laughs> you're already like the mirror and Gozer. If they were to damage us even more, we're already like really hurting where we left it off so i think yeah okay all right that's were you true. going for true. tpk <laughs> like- no 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 so so well i mean this is like the first like legit like dungeon crawl section that we've actually ever done in this campaign right which i i i, I think these are my favorite batch of three episodes since Goldem, and i really love those Goldem episodes I had a lot of fun editing yeah. and, and <laughs> these three episodes. Yeah, this was a good bunch. This was exciting. So I'd say the the worst part of it is uh, not being able to move very fast, right? Yeah. When you, uh, yeah, not being able to get anywhere, dragging our ass down in the middle of this thing forever, and then uh, trying to get the hell out was was a, a miserable experience. Which uh, speak for yourself. Which is, oh, yeah, I, I am. <laughs> Um, but yeah, back to that. When we did see Erica, I know my goal was to throw everything at her as fast as possible to try to kill her before she even got a, a chance to react, right? So fireball, you know, if everybody chucked him in, let's get rid of her as fast as possible. Yeah. Which I believe we came pretty damn close to taking her out. Yeah. If Bill could overall. just roll the right amount of dice, I mean... <laughs> We did take Seaweed Gozer out pretty quick. We had, uh, you know, Barry made an appearance, so we had Barry to help us. 
We had Barry to help us, but did Barry help us? Barry is very bad. I... <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not I just me. Like, it's, he's like it's a Brendel. Barry. Anybody can control Barry, and and Barry will critically fail. <laughs> and he's still bad. <laughs> yes. Here's here's a question though. Like, if if Bill would have rolled two more d six, could we? And they maxed out twelve points. Could we have gotten her? Yeah. Oh I my gosh! Are you serious <laughs> yeah. right now? Had Shaft rolled a 15 instead of a 14 on that last hand crossbow bolt, you probably you would have yep. got her. What? She had that one hit point left. She was. Yeah, she had. She was. Close. I think it was less than five. She was. Even so, if Barry so could have done a thing, Brendel, <laughs> anybody. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> oh Barry, my gosh! I almost. I did, I shouldn't have asked for that question. Shed a tear when Barry looked back over his shoulder. <laughs> As that bead of fireball that yeah. swung by Bryn. He deserved it. Just yeah. heartbreaking. Oh, I shouldn't have asked you that question. I'm really mad with the answer now. This is. Well, I think we all learned we cannot count on Brendel to save us. Well, he makes a mean potion. He's shooting a Roman Does he? candle over there. <laughs> nah, Does yeah, he? we're getting to that. It's it's here on the list. Yeah. Trust me. Oh the Brendel potion. Yeah. I'm so, right so now, mad I think, about uh, not... I'm double checking your dice from now on, Bill. This is <laughs> not like I already don't, but oh I, I believe I still have Barry. Yeah. So yeah. I don't yeah. know if you want yeah. Barry back or not, but I think I got Barry in my pocket. I or no, don't I, care. Yeah, I put it in my pocket. Is that a Barry in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> very very good. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> um, let's see, what else do we have? So then we fought, uh, we moved on, we fought a few humanoids, one with a shark head, one with ten tentacle, ten foot tentacles, and one with quills. Yeah, those were some pretty interesting bad guys. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty low challenge rating, too, actually. Perfect. Like, you guys made quick uh, quick work of them, really. Well, the, those quills seemed a bit you know, like they could screw uh, people up if they, they were... They could poison you, basically, is kind of the worst thing that they would do. It was pretty cool, though. Would that would that be an ongoing status effect if they were successful? Yeah, if you're poisoned? poisoned, you like have disadvantage on something or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> this is super it's important. not it's not quite the um what is it, the the blue rot? No, 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 no. It's not like a disease. It's it's just that yeah, sucked. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The blue rot is dangerous. Hideous. Blue rot is dangerous, man. Yeah. Ah, oh, poor Thuft. So we we wiped those guys out. I think that was just there to sort of give Erica some time hey, to yeah, absolutely. head on down the uh, the pike there. And then Gozer and, and I, I guess we sort of went down. The, uh, that was next, right? We sort of went down into that hallway after Erica. Everybody else was trying to battle everything and get their way down. And then, let's see, we got in there and that's when she pulled. I can't remember exactly how that worked. She she was She was pretty close to dead. Yeah. And then she started pulling down the supports that we're holding. Before she, she kind of made it to the back of this chamber, she goaded Gozer and she spoke of Thuft. Mm-hmm. And then uh. she kind of opened up this hidden passageway, this very narrow and short passageway, kind of got in there. And I described it as having all of these these like wooden supports in it as well. And um, just continued to like goad Gozer into following her, basically. <laughs> kind of like, a, like an old rickety mine shaft, eh? Yeah, exactly. If that's, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's totally what you're thinking. And then she kind of made it to a point where, you know, the, this this trigger point where she just kind of pulled out this, I think I described it as like a linchpin, right? Like she pulled out this yeah. specific piece that triggered the collapse of, of this, this little tunnel. Now, how in the, how does Erica know about Thuff? Is what I'd like to know. Good question. No, that is a good question. Yeah. What? I hadn't even thought of that. This is... <sighs> You're too focused on uh, deep sigh on Falzern. Yeah. So, so either, <laughs> I need to add either something Erica... To my Either Erica's watching us just like uh, Izzy. Right. Or maybe Erica and Izzy... Talk to each other? As, yeah, maybe yeah. they're... Are the Not. same person, like two halves of the same person? Oh, that's a good oh, yeah, that's a consciousness. Oh, no. Dissociative identity disorder? Do you guys know for sure, though, that Isabella knows that Thuft is dead? The last time Isabella saw Thuft was when she tried to give him that great big hug. 
depends yeah, on how much Falzerin's been smooching with her. Ah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's What's right. What's Falzerin yeah. been saying? You're a dirty Nothing rat. but a smile. I can neither you dirty confirm rat. nor deny that there's been <laughs> We've a got smooching. a mole. We've got a deep scion mole in our group. <laughs> Yes. You're right. That needs to be Lance. Oh, I'm adding this. There's string coming from a new sure. picture over here. With I'm not the... sure you Lance moles, but. Oh, <laughs> this one's getting lanced. Yeah. And pokey pokey. And a scimitar. That's right. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, that's that interesting. Kind of, uh, that kind of stood out to me. Oh, as, man. I was like, what's going on there? So much is hmm. happening. Yeah. This is this is why this is why like I think these are three of my favorite episodes. Like one we haven't had extended combat in ages, right? And uh in hindsight I probably wouldn't have made this whole place difficult terrain. That was <laughs> that was really <laughs> grueling. That really screwed us up. So that was uh that was definitely my bad. Um the place was uh, was much too large to have it all difficulty t- terrain. Maybe if I had like maybe one chamber, like that first chamber maybe it would have been okay. So yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> that was a little a little grueling and over the top on my part. But like even with the combat, like so many little tiny details, right, just kind of came up in the in in these episodes and You don't think the mama pod was o- overpowered or overboard? You're you're saying you wanted the mirror and the seaweed gozer or seaweed whatever to be more strong, but we're all passing out here. Right, but that that pod, like, literally ha- had, I mean, had Shaft stayed and and had gotten close and been raining down the amount of damage that he could put out as well, you guys would have made fairly short work with that guy. Yeah. It was just... It's all Shaft's fault. I knew well, it. No, no, that's, not. That's of course, not what I'm saying. <laughs> and Shaft, I think, played incredibly well to his character, but... The, the point of this, the, the, this, you know, this dungeon crawl, in quotations, is to, you know... It gets you into this situation that uh, a minor threat becomes a major threat just because of that situation. Because he turned around and ran. Yeah, I thought. Well, no, because, I mean, this whole fucking place is flooding. I would have got the hell out of there he, too. Yeah, he I did. mean, if, he, he if played, you notice, he played shaft. He did. The, the first yeah. thing I did, and when I when the gozer was covered, was I looked around and said the shaft or the uh, the room is filling, and I drank the the potion right. And then the first thing I thought was, now I have some time, so even if it floods, I can swim out of here. Right. But then I thought, wait a second, I better check to make sure it worked. I'm surprised that you checked, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I I wasn't expecting that either, but it makes total sense. Another mystery that I'm adding to the board with strings coming from Brendel mm. and all this garbage. He's also a deep Who tie-on. sold us a faulty potion? Or so made it. if you notice... You know, he's uh, Leland said the the water was filling. It, it went up six inches in one round. Yeah, yeah which that's is fast. six seconds. Yeah. I mean, that is pouring. Yes. Yeah. So it's it started at only three, right? But then I kind of described these additional collapses that you guys were kind of hearing echoing down. So as more of this is collapsing, of course, more water is is pouring in. So yes, yeah, it's, it's rising very quickly. Yeah, I thought this this whole scenario was even though I was you know sweating a little bit that maybe. We were going to say goodbye. You were to sweating. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I thought, I thought sure it was a goner. I thought it was awesome. Um, Lynn was, yeah. Elena was soaked. Just the way that, you know, Shaft totally, as Shaft would do, um, once he realizes that he's going to be screwed because he can't breathe underwater, he's like, well, I'd like to help you, but I'm not going to die. Takes right. off. Um, and I think Falzern is feeling, I think partly it's, in Falzern's character to try and help one of his party members. But also, I mean, the reason Gozer is down here and any of you are down here is because of Falzern's kind of... It's all Falzern's fault. ...dragged you along. So it's he's Falzern's feeling guilty fault. that, you know, he's not going to leave one of his friends, quotation, <laughs> piled under rubble as this thing's filling with water. And, I mean, I don't want to go too much in depth with what water how water works with falls in but yeah let's talk about that <laughs> <laughs> he might be less scared about water than the rest of the party so yeah i think that that was re- really cool uh to see the different different characters motivations and for it to make for a very tense situation i was having fun oh. i thought it was interesting with bren because at first when shaft took off it was you prick 
And then oh, yeah. it was right after that was, you know, a couple of rounds of fighting. And then, well, I better get the hell out of there here to survive. And then Falzerin gets swallowed up. And then suddenly, yeah. well, I got to go <laughs> and save Falzerin. You were just running back and forth, Yo, you know, in difficult bong. terrain. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. I was so. really sweating and trying to think what would Bryn do. And then, yeah, I mean, I'm saying what's going through my head. You guys heard it. I was, like, sweating, and I kept thinking about Gozer. And then I was, like, freaking out. Would I save Falzerin? What do I do? What do I... But your good friend Brendel from years ago was follow. He was right ahead of Shaft. He, said, <laughs> he, would, he, he yeah. turned around and did some some fireworks here and there yeah. but just to make you feel good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so do you think – I know that – uh, one of Bryn's traits is that she um, she has compassion for people who can't help themselves or who are in need of... Oh, I'm a sucker for defending the defenseless. Yeah. Like when they're truly defenseless, like when you were unconscious in that thing. So I was wondering, do you think that Bryn kind of made a calculation that Gozer is maybe beyond help or we, Bryn's not going to be able to do much with her hands to help Gozer, but... Because Falzern got swallowed by this big gelatinous uh, breathing pod mama, that um, there's a pot you could kill this character or this um, <laughs> yeah, bad guy and and help Falzern, and and that's kind of why you sort of. Are you asking me if Bryn wrote waffled. off Gozer? So that's why it didn't bother well, as much. Well, initially you were kind of. Uh, it seemed like you were going to be taken off, um, and maybe coming back for Gozer. Who knows exactly what would have happened. Um, had Falter not get got swallowed alive, but then you kind of took pause and tried to kill this thing that had swallowed Falter. And so I was just kind of wondering, is that because Brain thought there was more chance of helping Falter in? Yeah. Yeah. Like I understand that in character, you're not sitting there listening to listening to someone like Leland say, "Okay, Gozer's going to take 52 falling damage or whatever," right? And like, oh, I know how much her health is. And you're not doing the math. But like, I also would like to think that your character, when hearing 52, your character does get the realization of like, oh, crap, that's a ton of damage. Like, that's she right. She did. If, you, if a ceiling caves in on someone, I mean, it, that's typically um, not great. And Shaft yeah. Yeah. is like, Shaft and Gozer are closer than probably anyone in the party, maybe. And Shaft was right okay. there when it happened. And Shaft turned around. And ran away. I figure Shaft would have tried if it was doable, and he didn't, so... I can't remember how many people saw, actually, Gozer get smashed in by the coral. Was it only I, or was uh, it I think Bryn? Bryn was actually about 10 feet behind you as well, And I would have heard this. it, too. Okay. But, like, when Shaft was closest and turned around and decided that it wasn't worth doing or able to be done, she was like, all right. That's, I think yeah. that's what... That makes sense. I mean, there's always the chance that Erica took Gozer yeah. into her hidey hole or wherever, and yeah. they disappeared. She's taking her, taking her to the seaweed spa. Yeah, <laughs> she's gonna That's have cucumbers true. on That's her true. eyes and come I mean, back looking and, five and, years and younger. Gozer actually should have be, still been in her rage too when she took that fifty-two points of damage because then we we and my, this, we got a note from uh, Michael Caldwell he, that, uh, and we've made this mistake before too that. She still made the attack. Uh, you don't lose your raise when when she misses, right? So she she technically would have had resistance to that bludgeoning damage. So she she would have took the same amount of damage as as Shaft did hmm. from that collapse. Are we going to discuss the fact that we didn't at the time talk about relentless raging? Yeah. So like that little bit about the relentless Relent- endurance. Endurance. Yeah. Endurance. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I added in during editing. Because it didn't really make a difference. <laughs> no. Well, and even if even if Gozer had only taken half damage, so then would have still been conscious, she still was covered by oh yeah tons yeah. of coral. Exactly. That was flooding. Right. right. So she would have, after two minutes, been taken to zero anyway. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah, because effectively, like, I guess you would have been uh, restrained probably, maybe. Maybe as far as being incapacitated. I don't know if incapacitated explicitly means that they're unconscious. I don't believe it does, but but yeah, like you, you couldn't to move. Dig you can't dig myself out, but yeah, but maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it, it, we're at the end of fifty, right? Yeah, I maybe mean, she did, guys. Come we, on, we <laughs> we 
I mean, sec- technically, the whole thing is what maybe a half a minute after. I it was came just in, thinking, like, yeah, in. session fifty was like maybe forty five seconds. <laughs> exactly, the like, best cr- forty five seconds ever. Yeah, well, I mean, then that goes like Bryn making bouncing back and forth. Like these are like literally for your character split second decisions that Bryn has mm-hmm. to make in the moment. So. Yeah, it kind of makes sense that you're like, oh, f- oh, fuck, uh, no, this way, oh, mm-hmm. fuck, okay, this way, yeah. oh, fuck, Shaft oh, fuck, turned oh, fuck, around, oh, so I'm like, all right, forget it, and then, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. All I all I can say is 50 is my personally my favorite episode ever. I wish that like people we could recommend them like start listening at 50, but then they wouldn't understand everything that goes into it. <laughs> uh, it's like The Office or Parks and Rec. Yeah. You gotta see the character progression. Yeah, you gotta have the the legacy knowledge, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. It was just my favorite. Well, like Emily, how did you like uh, controlling the breathing pot? <laughs> that was fun. I, I liked attacking you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you liked attacking us until you were rooting for my inspiration. Then I was well, like, you, what? Because I was still on your side. I don't I want know. you guys to die. You're but trying, though. You're trying. Sort of. Well, yeah, I know. And, and that kind of is a, a strange position for Emily, for me to <laughs> ask Emily to, to put herself in, really, but. Um, I thought it was fun and, and, and different, and basically I washed my hands of it. If Falls had died, it would have been Emily's fault, <laughs> not mine. Oh, that, that's the main motivation. Well, no, what you guys don't know is Leland did private message me and said, bite him now. <laughs> and so I did, which made Falls go down into the stomach acid and knock him out. Yeah. So it's but I would like to know, this is the first internal surgery that was ever performed. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> I hadn't done a medicine check in so long, I was like, how do I do this? Yeah, you did like I mean, a gastroscopy on this. Falzer and Bryn are still in the dead breathing pod at the end of 50, oh, so they're not, okay. they're not entirely out of it yet, but Falzer is stable currently. It had been so long since I'd helped someone. I was like, what do I do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Panic in your voice. I just voice. love that you fucking just charged down its throat. Instead of- <laughs> yeah. Well, I was really afraid of like slicing into it and then being covered in some type of poison and taking damage or something. Oh, ah, okay. So you decided so, to get inside of it. So you dove where- into the stomach acid instead. <laughs> well, I mean. You did shoot an arrow right by his head, though. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> I like I liked that flavor from Leland that his it beak. just yeah. narrowly misses Falzern. I mean, Brendel hit me, freaking Brendel. He oh. can't hit a broad side of the barn. He can hit me. That was really really funny. <laughs> and Brendel got like a max damage hit on your. I don't team, think so I remembered to play Bryn mad at him after that. But no, there's just I still so much stuff. Although I think like. You know, spoilers after, like, Britain's pretty angry in the next episode anyway, so. Uh, yeah, nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, she just felt like, again, episode 50 was pretty fun, but it was pretty Brin heavy. That's probably why I love it so much. But, like, um, <laughs> you know, no shaft arguing with me or anything stupid. But, like, I really was, like, saving. Oh, I just felt the weight of the world on my shoulders. I didn't. Oh, sweating. But it was it was fun, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's that's the intensity that makes it exciting. I during that role where I got all those ones, I was really tearing up. Yeah, that Bill was saw it. just atrocious. That role. I thought Bill was dying. <laughs> I, falls are in. I mean, I mean uh, theoretically, if Gozer and uh, Falzerin both died, and and Bren and Shaft did make it out somehow and made it to shore. And Brendel. Half of the storyline is gone, right? Because yeah. now, maybe we'll do the towers, but everything else, screw it. I think totally. Shaft and Bryn would try <laughs> to find a way out of that contract. They'd, like, fake their own deaths and then, like, peace out. Like, separate and be like, You think right, you so wouldn't like, just try to find a couple other dummies schmucks? that you could rope into? <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe for exactly. the sake of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, you gotta play the yeah. character. There wouldn't be any Eric, uh, uh, Isabella stuff going on anymore. That's for sure. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe Erica's dead. You don't know. I don't know Ugh. if these hags would just let you guys off. You've already messed around quite a bit in their business. Yeah, I bet Isabella would come after you. Yeah. I really hope with one hit point left, Erica, like, one piece of the trap fell on her and she's dead. As does Falzerin. Because he's running low on uh, fireball beads. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone Do you have any left? It. Well, that's a great question, Emily. 
Have you been um, writing it down and keeping track? I think Leland and I had a bit of a discussion that I I don't know if I said it or not. I think I said, oh, I used my last fireball bead, but yeah. we talked afterwards. That wasn't my last fireball bead because okay. I'm terrible at keeping track of you items. Should have, yeah, you should have one I have, more. I have one left, which makes it even worse that I didn't give Brandon <laughs> And you one. know what's funny? Speaking of those, so um, uh, my buddy Riley, he was messaging me and uh about the episode where you handed those out and he's like you know you're a really kind dm i'm like what are you talking about he's like well i would have made uh as soon as falls and t- took those beads off that necklace i would have made them blow up oh, oh. because okay. as per how as per the, the rules of the item it says you use an action to remove a bead and throw it and oh. then once it hits the end of its trajectory it explodes sounds like a grenade yeah, it's almost like you're pulling the pin exactly and throwing yeah. it, throwing it. Uh, so, what? and at the time, that totally, like, I totally didn't even occur to me. I'm like, oh, okay, he's handing out these beads. Oh, great. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that w- I could have been, that's an entirely valid ruling. Oh, my gosh. But even in hindsight, nah, I, I wouldn't have made that decision, especially just in the situation that had, had I, had I, done something like that and made a call like that it just completely would have taken away all of the agency that bill as a player had in that specific moment as you know this ex- basically this exchange this bribe to get the rest of the party on board with his his end goals i mean that would just <laughs> t- talk about taking the wind out of the sails kind of thing but that that is i th- that made me immediately think though about the discussion of and differences between rules as written and rules as intended. Well, it is a little gray, right? Because oh, well, that's exactly that's where yeah. the rules as intended is the gray area, and where yeah. I think oh, a lot of the arguments. Don't even get me started rise. on rules as written, Leland. <laughs> you guys, he ar- he edited out so much of us arguing back and forth about whether this Mama Pod was engaged with Bill or not, and. Everyone, everyone, every listener thanks Leland for that. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so it boils down to I was misunderstanding my whole sneak attack as written, right, Leland? That's what it boiled down to because we continually use this phrase engaged with Gozer, engaged with Shaft. We do. Yeah, we do. But sneak attack as written says yeah, an I've- enemy target within five feet. I right. found this fascinating when uh, Elena looked this up because, I mean, I've never looked up um, sneak attack. I was ready to fight to the death. doesn't even say engaged at all. And um, Well, uh, yeah, and it's like we were discussing off mic, like nowhere in the player's handbook does it use the word engage. The only thing yeah. that comes close is taking the disengage action, which I think is where you where that terminology just comes from naturally. Yeah. Right? You think, okay, well, if I need to disengage, then I am engaged. Yeah, and it's not only us who use the term "engaged." Um, I've heard uh, lots of other folks use it as well. So I was kind of blew probably my mind. because the term "disengage" implies when you're within five ge- feet, you're engaged. Because yeah, disengage yeah, is in absolutely. there, right? So on my character sheet, I write like my sneak attack, and I wrote like sneak attack when ca- when enemy is engaged with other target. That is the word I put there. So what I was trying to wrap my mind around was there was a tentacle that was ten f- holding Falzer in, grappled, but it was 10 feet away from this uh, Mama Pod's body. So it wasn't within five feet, but I was like, how is he not engaged if he's literally holding Falzer in? That was right. what I couldn't wrap my mind around. Yeah, no, and I, I think that's a, vi- a valid argument. I am glad that you 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 should feel that you are you can bring those discrepancies up with the, a dungeon master, right? Any player should be able to feel that they can and have a discussion slash argument in our case about whether or not, whether or not <laughs> it, it works one way or the other, right? So I, it is a good thing that you, you should have brought it up. And I'm glad that you did. It's fine. I killed it. Because un- literally until I, because I looked it up myself. I'm like, oh, it, it says within five feet. Uh, and it yeah. just, it happens to justify the way I was <laughs> interpreting the, whether or not you got it. Uh, <laughs> so, um because it sort yeah, of makes sense, but to me, the, the five feet, like the five feet to me would be a five foot perimeter around even each tentacle. So it was sort of like, yeah, yeah, if exactly. If it's touching yeah. the actual thing, like isn't your arm part of a body? 
Like that's where sure and uh, and yes I and that's where I think your argument is still valid to be made and um, I've I easily could have been like yeah you know what these are like huge big this is all this tentacle itself is almost its own entity but I just I wasn't I wasn't thinking in that in that vein and I wasn't ruling that way unfortunately but I think it yeah. it could have went your way but I will say and I don't think we actually did make this mistake I thought I might have penalized you in the episode. But that same ruling going with the within five feet also means that when you were grappled and the the breathing pod's body was still uh, further than five feet away from you, you would still be able to use your bow, your magic bow, without disadvantage. Right. So True. it does work. It does work both ways for you, right? Yeah. As your bow, you you could easily argue is your better weapon. Just well, and John and Bill one. had good points about why it would maybe not be considered. Engaged, right? Yeah. If they're grappled in a tentacle? Yeah, I mean, this thing has, a, I forget how many tentacles, but... Like three? I mean, that brings up the argument, how many people could, or how many PCs could this enemy be engaged with at once? Like, if it's holding three people in tentacles, but focusing on a fourth PC that it's, like, it's already got these other three guys or girls um, grappled, and then it's attacking a fourth person, well, who's it engaged with? So right. it's an interesting case, I think, that you you don't run into with a lot of bad guys. Yeah, I just always sort of, specifically to sneak attack, always looked at it as somebody was capturing the attention of the thing, and you could sneak an attack in there, which yeah. gave you, you know, advantage because they weren't paying any attention to what you were doing. And, and then, you know, you can get into the whole argument of within five feet if they're actually, you know, in, engaged or a you know, paying attention to something else, thematically, you could say that's how you could get some kind of advantage over them. Right. But like you said, if it's a great big thing, it has a whole bunch of eyes and a whole bunch of tentacles, you could make the argument that, you know, it could be watching and, and taking care of a lot of things at one time. Did sure. it have a bunch of eyes? I, don't, I didn't really describe it as having eyes, actually. So, uh, but also another for further clarification of the sneak attack rule, it is with when a... When a, um, what does it say? It says it's an when, enemy. A, when an enemy of the target is within yes, five feet. So it's so not like enemy a. enemy uh, does not yeah. need to be your friendly either. As long as it is fighting and, and its focus is on something within five feet of it. Yeah, like if the shark head guy right? was so, within five feet, that doesn't count. Sure, exactly. That's that's also really important. I mean, should you ever get into a situation where it's it's not just a. Uh, 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 the part of the you know two sided event where it's party versus whomever, it could be you know the party and three other sides right in this right. large engagement. So all that is also mean, exactly. All we might as well finish the rest of the text, which is basically uh, that enemy that targets enemy cannot be incapacitated already. Right. If it is, it doesn't count, and then um, you can't already have a disadvantage on your attack roll. For right. any reason. So if I had a disadvantage on my tech roll, I don't get sneak attack. And John, I think to your point about saying, you know, um, other situations where an enemy's focus may be taken, I think in those situations, I would be like, okay, you know what, Elena, you get advantage on this attack because of that, which by extension gives her sneak attack. Um, so you could argue that, you know, yeah, you you get your sneak attack, but really it's saying no, you get advantage, and you just happen to get mm-hmm. sneak attack as a result of that, and that may just be feel like it's semantics, but I think situationally it becomes important, right? Right. That's how getting advantage through inspiration became such a big deal. Yeah, I like absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's everything I have down from forty-eight to fifty. Um, pretty much, yeah. I think we already hit on the the shitty potions. And, uh, yep, that's that's about it. That's where we well, ended. Technically, we only know that one was bad. That's true. I'm yeah. going to say probably three were bad. <laughs> yeah, Brendel's well, three. That's rude. Brendel drank well, his. If Brendel's that bad at spellcasting, he's yeah, got to be... Worked. He's got to be good at something else, so... Not necessarily. Mm, yeah. Not necessarily. <laughs> he didn't save Thruft. And technically, he didn't save Gozer either, because it started coming back, the disease. Yeah, well. Oh man, fifty one is going to be intense, you guys. Tune in to fifty one. You guys expect w- way too much of Brendel, just because you just because you are all incredibly skilled does not mean everyone you come across and may travel with is also as adept 
at their chosen craft. Just Thankfully, he's that handsome. Out <laughs> Says who? Oh, we man. have a minimum amount of competency and incompetency to be in this group. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah, he's below the lowest bar. Yeah. All right. So, I guess the next thing is questions. Should we go back to Mike's question from uh, before? Sure. Oh, yeah. We kind of missed part of a comment from Mike when we were on um, the game all night with Chris Whitpan. Yeah. Uh, so basically, he <laughs> kind of asks, wants to know from the character's pre- uh, point of view, like, are you really, th- were you really thinking of getting into a little rowboat, taking it five miles offshore towards this infinite storm? <laughs> and if that was a really good idea? Well, yeah. One, no, it was not a good idea. No. <laughs> Shaft even stopped in the show, I believe, and said, now hold on a second. Let me get this straight and sort of walk through that whole possibility, right? Yeah, absolutely. Before we got the boat. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I don't think I had any intention of ever getting in that boat to go out towards the storm. Nor swimming to it like Gozer was doing or <laughs> even... <laughs> See, I think Gozer would have gotten in the boat to swim out there because she's strong. She could do it in her mind. Yeah, Bryn wouldn't eh. go. Uh-uh. Yeah, Faldron would have been pretty weary of that plan as well. I think that it didn't have a great chance of success. So. I would have been like, yeah, so we're not helping you do this, all right? Bye. If we couldn't have got the crabs or something. I'm, I'm yeah. very, very thankful that these crabs were there and that Bryn was able to steal them. I, that was fun right. for me. Bryn's just trying to like have some fun right now. She's, she got to Pisces so pissed off. She's like... Yeah, screw it. Let's steal some crabs. Uncharacteristic for Bryn to be oh, okay. frustrated and. Let's. How many times have it's happened? I'm just. It's probably a good thing there aren't any good characters in the party, or we wouldn't have stolen the crabs. Not all characters. would Falzerin have been on is good. Board for he's that. supposed to be good. Chaotic. Is he? Chaotic. We've corrupted yeah. him. But he's evolved a bit. He's yeah, evolving that's... to neutral. I don't know. Neutral, neutral. Falzerin's just so. He's he's a little fish who's been thrown into a big I knew you were a fish. He's a deep water scion, you guys. (laughs) I knew it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. Michael continues to say a bunch of extremely nice things about us uh, that I'm not going to repeat on air because I hate when podcasts do that self-aggrandizing, masturbatory bullshit. So thank you so much, Michael, for all of your kind words, though. I did share them all with the party, so uh, we all have read your email. He said Bryn's the best, I believe not yeah. quite no no no, no. <laughs> all right any more questions anything in from anybody else yeah mike also said about the reflecting pools session 49 he thinks leland should have named the episode some play on words with the lyrics from jingle bells like dashing through the woe or something like that because there were so many dashes from the party <laughs> oh. <laughs> dashing through the woe <laughs> and then he, this is where he brought up that uh Gozer would not have lost her rage right. when fighting Erica because Gozer did attack. Even though she missed, she'd still attacked, so she wouldn't have lost the rage. In a one crab in close sub. Throwing fireballs. <laughs> 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 and finally. Yeah, Bill Ben. The Bill Ben himself. Bill <laughs> Nye, the science guy. He says, first off, a big congrats to everyone on your 50th episode. Uh, second, he loves the idea of the one shots and making mixing up the cast, uh, which so far we're going to record a little the end of it right after this. And the first oh, bit, yeah. oh man, it was really fun. It's so fun <laughs> to be able to actually like play a character with with most of you. Uh, third, even though you all do great at going over each section of shows and talking about how you feel about each one, is there anything looking back you want to reflect on? Oh. Ooh. Interesting. I I kind of wish I had have... Rolled the right amount of dice? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I cannot get over that. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to let you live that one down. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, boy. Thankfully, nothing bad happened as a result Shoot. of that. <laughs> I can't. I, can't. I, uh, I kind of wish I had of spent more time and forced myself into making a bit of a character voice for Falzern. And part of the reason that's on my <laughs> mind lately 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I, that's butt. not laughing at you. That's laughing yes, of course. with you. <laughs> with me. Yes, yes. I, I was don't laughing know at what you. you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't know how much we... I don't think we've talked we much anything. kind of on air about our one shot all that much. But anyway, um, we're playing new characters for a little one shot that M's DMing. Um, and I decided to roll with a character voice and <sighs> choked under did pressure you? for the most yeah, part. Yeah, did you? Yeah. yeah well, so, so, so far, we're still waiting to. You're not going to hear a lot from Bill and his character. <laughs> Uh, we'll see about uh, how much courage I have on the next recording uh, after this. I think but, as first timers, we're learning. You yes. need to pick an accent that you can easily do because well, you're already uncomfortable. That's right? true. Yeah, I, I definitely sure. am the type of person who suffers from some stage fright, and so I, that kind of I was surprised at how much stage fright stage fright I had when I had to put on an accent for the first time on uh, on air. Yeah, and also it's an accent I'm not super sure with doing. yeah yeah so yeah, yeah elena certainly has a point in maybe kind of sticking within your wheelhouse of operation um but your i don't wheelhouse. think there's anything there's nothing wrong with yeah thanks pam there's nothing pam. wrong with <laughs> there's nothing wrong with branching out obviously but i also think for new newer players such as yourselves that your character is not your accent your character are the actions that they do yeah. okay yeah so yeah. there should never be any pressure of, of no. feeling like you have to do an accent, even if other players around the table are doing them. I agree 100%. I myself, yeah. as, a, as a player, not until just last year with this new, uh, or last year and a half with this new group um, that I started playing with, they're all big role players. And I was never really like that, and I was never really comfortable like that myself. And But, but playing with them, I've, I've grown into much more of a role player. And I mean, it certainly has enriched that experience for myself. Um, that may not be the case for every player, but yeah, you just got to ease into it, man. I mean, shit, I've been playing Five E since it came out, and I just now started doing actual character voices. Like, yeah. yeah, no, that I think that's a great point that that needs to be made as well. That you know, your experience with D and D is not based on your ability to do a voice or not. This is more kind of just like a personal thing for me, where. I want to be more comfortable doing it, so I kind of wish I had been doing it all this time because I would be comfortable by now, I, okay, I would think, I or you. more yeah. comfortable than I am. So it's kind of like I'm experiencing the really awkward and kind of nerve-wracking experience of rolling with a voice for the first time now, and I'm kind of wishing that I had already got past this point months ago. But Right, but is, like again, to, again, to my personal anecdote, like this party doesn't really do extravagant character voices either i mean yeah gozer is gozer is a very distinct voice obviously <laughs> uh, mainly out of her half orc heritage and the way gozer emily smash. plays her and yes in gozer's case a lot of gozer's voice is gozer but like emily will i'm sure admit herself gozer's voice has waxed and waned throughout this campaign <laughs> yeah. as well yeah but Yelp. that doesn't change the way gozer acts and the way we all think and 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 know how gozer would act right and Shaft, I mean, not to denigrate John, uh, John's role play of Shaft, but I mean, I can very clearly tell Shaft's voice from John's voice, and there is right. a very there's there's kind of this slight um, inflection and yeah. uh, that that Shaft takes on, and it is a voice. It's a very understated voice, but it is a very well crafted voice. I yeah. Think. Um, so, like, <laughs> we're not all talking in Scottish and French accents around here <laughs> is what I'm really trying to say, right? So, the exposure to that type of role play for you is just hasn't been there. And I think that that can really make a difference. Are we releasing the one shot next episode after this party? No, there will be another batch of three episodes. Okay. And then after that, the one shots will come out. Okay, I was going to say, this is a good opportunity to plug it and maybe give a little sneak peek, but I don't know if we want to do that. Like of our characters, you mean? Yeah, maybe. Hey, if well, you guys we were I mean, not. We want to pique some interest. Eh? I've already announced uh, Jacques Mathieu. If you haven't tuned into After Party 15 on, on Game All Night, you should check out because that was a hell of a time. And yes. uh, again, great yes. production. So go seek them out. Um, you'll get kind of the, the 411 on my character, but... Yeah, that was right. a game yeah, all night exclusive. exclusive. Yeah, yeah. Pam likes to call him Jack. Because <laughs> I'm Pam. Yeah, sure. Why don't Why don't we Why don't we do a Just quick little real plug? Just real quick, because we still have to do the reflecting answer, I guess. But 
Go ahead, Pam. Oh. I'm sorry. Hi. Go ahead, Pam. Hi, I'm Pam. <laughs> uh, it's capital P, capital A, capital M, exclamation mark, all the time. And my accent <laughs> is, uh, this is what I meant by I'm trying to go with something I'm kind of uh, used to and a little bit familiar with. So I just really try to, like, have a Michigan accent. So I Does your mom just, like, listen to these? No. Okay. I'm kind of I'm com- kind of imitating my mom as as best as possible. Yes. Um but it is very exaggerated. I don't think I was this bad when when I moved to Canada, but yes. maybe Al- Elena's a originally from Michigan, so her some of her her mom has a it's pretty a little strong accent. More Minnesota y yeah. maybe than Mich- Michigan, but yeah, Jack. Jack and Pam are friends. <laughs> they get along pretty well, yeah. <laughs> Bill, let's let's hear it. <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> no pressure, so I'm playing um, a new class, which is exciting. Um, I'm a paladin, and John copied me. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, his name is Drajjed. Oh, there we go, buddy. Very not, ins- yeah. not inspired from any sort of pop culture or anything that i stole from at all so yeah that's that's him he's um that i i wanted to do a romanian accent because um if if this were a setting in the real world that's where he hails from and where he was born and raised um and that ties a lot into his backstory with his family and whatnot i I won't spoil too much but i felt really like that accent was the right one for him but it is not one that i've does he like to count numbers all. on Sesame Street? <laughs> yes. <laughs> one, a two, uh, uh, a three. Uh, that's that's how you could get into your character yeah, voice each time. Yeah. Just count one. up, and then when you when you're in it, then you just two. move on to other things. One yeah, yeah. lay on hands, a two lay on hands, a three, <laughs> three lay on hands. <laughs> 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 yes. So everyone you know, I, can do the accent except for me, apparently. No, I will. I will that's, that's so funny. I will say that with everyone's like having these exaggerated accents, it's really hard not to want to mimic them, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's so hard. It ends up being mo- just a bad Russian accent for the most part. We're all doing accents. John's got a good one. Yeah. It's, it's kind of scary. Yeah. I mean, well, with. With one shots, I think they're a great way to try out a character class that you're not familiar with, or something like that. If you can, you can get into a, a you know, play a, a four or five hours or whatever, and you get a taste of what that that class is like or what that race is like. So it's a great way to try class, or uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you always wanted to see how that would work out with a multi class. Um, but I wanted to pick something, first off, I wanted to pick a cleric, because I've never played a cleric before, but the more I looked into it, I wanted to find some uh, kind of a oath or different type of, uh, of way of, than shaft. I didn't want to be shaft again, right? So I wanted to do something a little different, and the things that I sort of appeal to me for a character is always something like the uh, the neutral kind of guy that can go either way go with the flow but i ended up going with paladin because i found this cool oath of despair uh sort of a homebrew and i thought it was a little different so this this guy is sort of you know doesn't really care too much about uh what's you know this this is a pathway your your life is just a pathway to the next and and he was going to be not talk a lot and sort of be one of those guys that, uh, you know, has an oath, has a, uh, a code, and that's what he wants to live by. So I thought that would be a cool way to, cool, cool guy to try out. So this is my first paladin I've ever played. So can we pretty excited uh, about that. hear him talk for a sec here? Well, he, he, the idea is I sort of thought like, at first, I was going to do like Lurch from the Adams family, where he just really doesn't say <laughs> hardly right. anything at all. Uh, but then I thought, you know, I want to be able to, you know, talk a little bit more. So I, I don't care. Go follow me. You know, some of a deep kind of yeah, like guttural to the point, right, to the point right, right. kind of deep guttural voice. Yeah. So I think so far, I mean, with we've played. A little bit, and and I sort of like being that guy up front. I usually always play wizards or something to that effect. So having somebody that's up front is different too. 
So you got Bill who's afraid to talk, John who's chosen not to talk much, and then Leland and I, you can't get to shut up, so. <laughs> <laughs> Works out great. That's very yeah. true. Yeah, we fill the, fill the silence. <laughs> uh, so any more kind of re- reflecting on, on our past here as, as, a, as a party? Oh, yeah. I didn't hear this question ahead of time, so I might have to answer Sure, it yeah, we can cut you. So it's the question was anything. I, I mean, I assume what it means is: is there anything we would have done differently with our characters, or felt that we would have chosen another path? That is that really the essence of it? Well, I mean, it could maybe even be uh, specific decisions that your characters made based on a particular amount of knowledge you had at at one point. Um, oh, I had something that I remembered the other day. Um, Gozer took the letter from Hank Appleby's. Remember? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I never saw it, and now she's buried with it. <laughs> so. That's assuming she kept it. Yeah, that's assuming she it kept it. It could be long gone. Who knows where it is? I never it. probably read it. is long gone. Uh, I mean, hopefully it wasn't anything too vital, because Bryn doesn't I don't know. I remember what it said. Yeah. That was a long-ass time ago. I know. I was thinking about it the other day, though. I think that was all the way back in session 13 where I read that to Gozer. I don't think that was oh anything gosh. too important. I mean, it had, I hope, I hope it, it, had, it had something to do with uh, why Hank was in Drew Call and um, uh, Prince Charmington III and uh, Krug of Crag and that kind of stuff. Dead, dead, dead. Uh, yeah. uh, but, uh, but it was also <laughs> a letter that was addressed to, to Samuel Coltis. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Well, I'm going to pretend Bryn doesn't know that, but man, <sighs> reflections. What were you thinking, John? Add that to my little map of yarn. You know, I don't know. I think I think I like where Shaft is at, and I think he's made relatively good decisions based on where he's coming from throughout this. I yeah, I don't I don't think I have anything that I regret. Maybe maybe he should have been a little more deceptive. He's been a little too forthcoming with things. <laughs> That's probably it. <laughs> I think Gozer's wow. bigger, biggest regret is she, <laughs> she and Thoft had plans that they didn't get to follow through on. Yeah. They made plans one night where they were at night while they were keeping watch together to go and go back to the mountain and take over. But they Freaking needed Brendel. money. They needed money to... Uh, be able to carry out their plan. And so they were going to make you two, uh, Bren and, and Shaft, go back to Drew Call and find the money that you guys had stashed there and steal it and take it from you <laughs> yeah. to be able to go to the mountain and oh, bribe man. all the goblins and well, hobgoblins. For a minute, I was mad at Brendan for not saving Thuff, but now, I mean, I <laughs> Yeah, well, and oh, man, that, that was a really. What episode was that in? Because you guys should maybe go listen to that now that Thuff's gone. But that was uh, that was fun to to record, um, <laughs> and like I just you know as antagonistic as, as Gozer is like just like that Gozer Thuft relationship was like the soft side of Gozer, right? I yeah. loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the reasons I loved so much loved Thuft so much is because of his relationship with Gozer. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to go back and listen to the things that we had to skip. That we could listen to now. Oh, absolutely! But there's so right. many things. I mean, just going back and finding where those where those lines would be too, right? Because some of it we could listen to probably ninety percent of it, but there could be little pieces that mm-hmm. yeah, that could be yeah. Bad, I so. should maybe have. Uh, I should. I'll start to keep a log of all of these kind of times we kicked certain people off mic. Because mm-hmm. I mean, I have. I could tell you all this. All the episodes that have the the after credit stuff. Which speaking of session fifty did have one. And actually, we just we had one in in session forty six, I think it was as well. So we've it's been a quite a long stretch without one, but we've kind of had two. And we in, were in not quick allowed succession. to listen to fifty. We were no. allowed to listen to forty six, but not. Yeah, 50. yeah. I let you guys could listen to forty six mainly because uh, Pat McDonald was was kind enough to to lend his roll and write voice um, to the aspiring cause once again for us, uh, and that was really fun to put together too. Now, in the next three releases, do we get to? We should get to Mr. Bonacore as our NPC guest, yeah, right? Yeah. Great. That yeah, should be yeah. session 53. Okay. That was a ton because of fun. Because somehow we get out of the, <laughs> that pit in the ocean. <laughs> well, Bill oh, Ben man. has one more thing. Yeah. He says, um, did you all have any idea how long this first campaign would take? 
Or is everyone just going with the flow? Oh, gosh. I'm going with the flow. Well, I don't think I had a great deal of um, expectations. Noobs. Yeah, I mean, being my first oh, yeah. D&D campaign, um, I think given our goals early on, we've certainly found lots of things to get sidetracked on. But uh, I think Leland, whether this is recorded on mic or was just something we chatted about at another time, I can't remember, but made it. you made a good point that our main story arc and and campaign goal with these towers like that's not like a challenge rating of 0.5 or anything like that you know what I mean? that's a that's going to be a a big thing more than likely uh, when we get to it so you you can't just run into that at level one and expect to not get wiped out so i've been really enjoying all of the little side tangents we've gone off on and they help us level up and sometimes get gold and items and stuff like that to Not recently, improve our gosh. characters. <laughs> um, <laughs> and find new allies. So yeah, I'm no gold, I'm, no items. I'm enjoying the ride. Um, however long it takes to, to get to a resolution Falls of this story. I would say that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Falzerin's unconscious right now. So this built Leland, on. <laughs> do you have any idea how long this is going to take? No, no. <laughs> I'm, uh, 50 episodes. I'm with. I'm. I'm here for the ride too. Just going with the flow because, like, I mean, how could I possibly predict um, when and if you guys decide to actually travel to the towers? Right, regardless of how prepared you are or, or whatever. I, I, <laughs> I mean, just I just know that things are happening in the world, right? Regardless of the actions the party really takes, unless those actions directly interfere with those specific uh, situations and uh, events, right? So I don't know. Some of those events may may change the timetable one way or the other for the party as well, too, depending on their proximity uh, or, or to, to those events. You know, weird random factors. The towers have not affected us directly. Not really, no. Everything, um, we've been, everything we've been focused on is because of something that's affecting us directly right. and we choose to go that direction that's true we're very reactionary yeah, yeah, i feel yeah. like you yeah. could we're, argue we're that they do affect us but how, no how ultimately so? but we're not focused on it well in ways we don't know yet i think, Ask they're, Leland. I think they're affecting the greater Aspar- aspera but um yeah not us directly per se i mean every time we get in a situation where we start uh, arguing about what the next thing we need to do is and we all say let's work focus on the tower we suddenly come to that roadblock where we go, okay, well, well how are we going to do that? So I think, True. you know, that's when we sort of sign tangent off onto something else. Well, maybe we can get some magical items or maybe, you know, uh, uh, Isabella can help us or maybe we can, you know, get something else to be able to go accomplish that goal, but just not yet. So I mean, you promised Bryn more magical items. She's probably not going to believe you this time. So. Oh, well, that's Don't a Don't pull that. <laughs> <laughs> Once bitten, uh... How's that saying go? Twice shy. You you believing what I what Shaft says or what Shaft doesn't say doesn't affect Shaft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shaft's just basically a big blue tower. Doesn't affect the body at all. That's true. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> a short blue tower. <laughs> well, I mean, I does mean, the mirror make so, the yeah. tower taller? <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, so Emily, you you answered, but like John, what do you feel about the length and kind of the progression that has been made so far? I mean, I think some things are going far slower than I thought, but much of it's going, you know, it's a little bit of both, right? There's some things that I think are you don't even realize. We're just it, like hard to believe we're 50 episodes plus in. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't seem like you know we've really scratched the surface on on the great things that we can do. And in other aspects, it feels like, you know, we haven't really, you know, learned more about the ultimate uh, goal here. So, but I don't think it's, it's a, it feels like it's dragging to anybody. I think we just go on, like we said, we're very reactionary. We're going through and, and building our characters, getting to know, you know, what we can do and how we can accomplish our main goal. So, no, I think we're going with the flow. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Maybe we'll have a couple more one-shots thrown in here and there. I hope so. I mean, 
Well, you face if you're playing a campaign on any campaign, you play it until it starts to drag for the party, right? And when everybody starts going, okay, I think we're feeling like we've sort of beat this to death. That's when you'll naturally, you know, end. Yeah. Yeah. I certainly am not feeling that. I mean, I'm no. still very invested in this story and and pretty much loving every tangent we go on. I mean, they're all interesting and exciting, and I'm wondering, you know. How are they related or are they related and to what extent are they related to the main plot? Um, so it's all just adding more interest for me to looking forward to finding out exactly how all of this works together and what's what's the big picture that Falzern isn't aware of and I'm not aware of either. So hmm. campaigns usually come to a close when we beat this to death. Is this Brendel? Because we... <laughs> I'm feeling pretty close to beating this to death. Brendel will live forever. <laughs> nope. Well, I mean, if if you're on a if your goal is to do something and you have to be 15th level to be able to accomplish the yeah the end boss kind of thing, right? And then you're you're playing for two years and you're seventh level. You know, it's time to move things along a little bit. I don't get that feeling with this at all. I think we're we don't know what we're in for, or what we have to do, but it's it's progressing every time we play. I think in a very natural and fun way. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely still interesting. We're definitely getting experience, and I mean, my web of conspiracy and the lines connecting. There's so much that was even added in this after party. It's still a puzzle to me, and I love it. I think that yeah. I'm not tired of it yet. Tired of Brendel and, and Barry, but uh, <laughs> tune in to see if Bryn beats Brendel to death. <laughs> well, I'm happy to hear that, and I do hope the uh, the incorrigible lights feel the same way. Oh, you didn't call them Lelanders. Yeah, Good job. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it's because you've got sleeves on your sweater today. It's yeah. throwing you yeah. off your game. I don't have my Mojo. sleeveless vests on. No. <laughs> Sleepless vest. I still love it when you say that. <laughs> I wonder uh, though if, because um, like I don't, I don't like have a like a, a you know quote unquote natural end point planned per se for this campaign. Like maybe I should have one, um, not just because of the way campaigns usually fizzle, which I completely agree with you, John. They just rarely do they come to some satisfying conclusion, but also for the the show right i mean clearly we all agree and and it certainly sounds like from the oodles of feedback that we get from uh the listeners that they so much aren't they, they don't feel that it's played out quite yet uh either but when like when will it when will it be played up by episode like session 100 um should we should it be wrapped up by then should we launch into some other type of campaign some other type of story like do we do, I don't know. I don't know. Am I, um, do any of you want to, for the next campaign, herald the DM for an entire campaign? Um, I mean, no. <laughs> like, those are all questions that, like, none of, us are, did a one shot. <laughs> none of us are thinking of, right? So we, no. The Adios did uh, finally get a core set of books. That was exciting this yeah. past week. Yeah. We, got the, we do have a the, DM guide. and Yeah, the Dungeon Master's Guide and a second player's handbook, so we don't have manual. to share one. Ooh. Yeah. Ugh, don't put that All I ask on is, at the final episode, I want Shaft to be in a rocky chair writing a letter to Falzerin saying, uh, you know, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> this is your, here's your gift this year. You and, did say uh, you probably wouldn't out. write. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's what makes it so much more special. Than, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's come around. He's completely changed his tune because of oh your... No, I'm really, I'm really, really old. Though, he's only I'm writing this, to right. Falzerin, though. Only to Falzern. Yeah. Yeah. We have a special bond. I, I'm just going to assume the rest of you are dead. <laughs> ghosting. <laughs> just ghosting. And and he's some kind of high-powered uh, scion at oh, the yeah. some uh, deep uh, water Warlock scion. Academy, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Oh, I love this. It's so good. <laughs> ah, these are really good episodes, everybody. Good they job. Oh. And yeah. you know what? They sounded so fucking good, too. And that's not trying to suit my own Pat horn, but like our 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 production quality has gotten like leaps and strides better than that first like batch of six episodes. Yeah, I'm I super agree. happy yeah. with how how awesome. the show is sounding. Everyone sounds great. 
Yeah, just the the. I think I've dialed finally. I've kind of really dialed in the the appropriate volume levels for all the music and stuff. Uh, yeah, I think I'm. Yeah. I mean, it sounds if, really good. If people want to get friends that are familiar with D and D listening, I think that like in the 40s somewhere they could still pick up and learn who we are a little bit. They might not know all the background, but they're gonna still enjoy like like 48 through 50 was still a good dungeon crawl, like you said. Like, I think mm-hmm. it's pretty good. I did like uh, when you posted the waveforms for episode 50 that I lo- you were on my channel, I believe, at the time. And I looked through and there was big, long gaps. And I go, okay, that's where I said I moved. <laughs> and a nice, big, long gap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I will say the Adios channel was pretty busy all the way across. Yeah, lots of arguing between uh, okay. Elena and Leland. No. And... Me saving your butt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have anything else? Are we wrapping it up? No, not for me. Wrapping it up. Okay, uh, that's all I got. Well, I've been Bill. I'm Elena. Oh, you starting? Are you supposed to start? Yeah. You know what? I love how we <laughs> suck at this. It's so good. Hey, I'm Elena. I wasn't I gonna let Rin. it go through. This is Bill. He plays Falzerin. That that annoying I, guy, I... Is Shaft, played by John. <laughs> and. Uh, we love Shaft Hello, and I've been, John. I've been Gozer. I'm crushing underneath the winter roller room. That's, that's just... Okay, Leland's turn. <laughs> I think we got Leland. Leland. <laughs> oh, I guess I don't get one. <laughs> Morbid. You guys do Leland? <laughs> I like and you. I'm Leland. I was yeah. really hopeful we were going to nail it that time. <laughs> But you starting it threw everything off. Oh, Why yeah. did you do that? All right, we're not redoing this. That is it. This episode is over. And that's our show. Our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. For your own musical inquiries, contact James Mercy Music at gmail.com. All other music and ambient noise is courtesy of tabletopaudio.com. The Encouragement Party is sponsored by Critical Hit Design. Visit criticalhitdesign.com for all of your graphic design needs. You can find more info on the characters and world at encouragementparty.com. Enjoying the show? Have any questions or rules corrections? Email us. Contact at encouragementparty.com or reach out on social media. The Encouragement Party on Facebook and Instagram at EncourageablePar on Twitter using the hashtag AfterPartyIP for a shout-out during our behind-the-screen after-party episodes that drop every fourth release. Happy adventuring! Alright, ready? Three, two, one. Alright, wow, there you go. That was the most synced I've ever heard it. Our, look at our spike. That was two people clapping at the same time, and it's just like a straight up and down. We should probably try out for the Olympic team. Yeah, synchronized like clapping. Synchronized clapping. Synchronized, clapping. Yeah. <laughs> synchronized uh, podcast think, synchronizing. That's yeah. what they call it. The SPS is the category. Uh, that's going to be a, a summer games in, in 2024. Yes. <laughs> I hope that we get some really cool gear out of it, you know? Become Instagram famous. That's what it's about. When when is the Which next gloves? Olympics? What, what gear would you get? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some some team gloves. Gloves without the palm, without palms, because you gotta yes, you can't cl- clap fingers. with gloves. It's like yes. the opposite of the gloves that don't have fingers. It's not fingerless gloves. It's finger gloves without. Yeah. 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 Fing- yeah. Fingerful. Fingerful. You know gloves. what? They could make fingerless gloves and then use all the scraps to give us the gl- like. Save, reduce, reuse, recycle, you know? There you mm-hmm. go. It's mm-hmm. environmentally friendly. Save the planet. That's, uh, well, that's why the IOC actually finally agreed to allow SBS into the Olympics <laughs> because of the green initiative. And they're trying to really what you change say their public image. so believable because you throw in, like, some abbreviation, like, search engine optimization, SEO. I had to go, I had to get you off the podcast. Just make up some random abbreviation, meant. like, search oh, engine optimization. IOC. You always, you know all the abbreviations, man. So you just have to, in a straight face, be like, well, the IOC. I don't know. Absolutely. If I was just like, uh, well, the BBA. Uh, I'd believe you. Yeah. <laughs>